Monty, welcome. Good morning, you guys. This is Monty uh, once again back at it again. Just finished wiping down my car. Now taking in the um, the lovely morning. Uh, it's going to be nice and warm. Pretty much a perfect day out here in sunny Southern California and Camarillo, uh, specifically California. Uh, when it's perfect weather for us, all year round or something close to it in Camarillo, doesn't mean that. We're getting away with anything, you know. Let's be clear. We're supposed to have water, a good amount of water, by way of the rain. We're supposed to have some cold temperatures every once in a while. We're supposed to have inclement weather, you know. It's supposed to, I think, uh, vary a little bit. You, you know, seasonality. I don't think there's anything wrong with seasonality, even though, you know, we like to have clean cars and not wash them too much and all these other things that are convenient. Fading, excuse the noise. As I always say in the fiat world the word is getting out more and more that the game is over the um the fiat world is it it, it it had its reign like the roman empire for a certain amount of time but all good things come to an end the party is coming to a conclusion the punch bowl is running empty all of the free money all of the perks and lavish benefits of being connected to um the Federal Reserve and the central bankers and all of the pigs who were just gorging away at the trough for so long, a lot of that is going to be taken away. And with consumer demand for goods and services reaching historical lows, that is an indication. Don't ignore that. I don't care what anybody tells you. Uh, Toys R Us, Sears, Verizon's laying off 40000 um, J.P. Morgan Chase is getting rid of a lot of mortgage uh, uh, personnel, brokers and agents and such. Um, Ford is going to lay off probably 60,000 people. Um, you name it. Uh, Sears, <laughs> they're gonna, that's going to put 60,000 people at least probably in, in, in the very near future, into the market for jobs. So if you think it's competitive now, I have one friend who was looking for a job. Uh, she still is looking for a job, as a matter of fact. And she told me that there was 500 candidates for her particular position that she was looking at, even though she's older, an older person, and about, I mean, coming up on 50, and... Um, Competing against, of course, people half her age, right? With probably more credentials, more experience or something. Uh, at least more credentials. Um, but, you know, it's just a typical story, you know. you you got to be careful. The um, competitiveness in the job market is a result of bad policies uh, implemented by state and government local agencies making people, uh, you know, cranking out students not well versed in uh, finance and credit card management and the history of the dollar and monetary policy for you know for better or for worse some of these things need to be passed along we need to educate our, ourselves and our children financial financial literacy is important what does the dollar mean that that are, what, what does the dollar represent that's in your pocket where did it come from where is it going you know what is the value of it are there any alternatives? Are, are you know what are the pros and cons of having one currency, a monopoly currency? Is there a such thing as competition when it comes to money? Some of these questions are very good questions. A lot of them are very good questions, actually, and they need to be answered. And moving right along, my name is Monty Henry, owner of DPO Surveillance Equipment. I run a full service surveillance and security equipment company. We have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all of the products. We have 24-7, 365 tech sales and customer support. We have perhaps the largest inventory of items that not only can you buy, but you can rent and lay away as well. And we have the largest inventory of, um, I'm sorry, we have the largest media library. Um, oh yeah, before I forget, we have tons of new products on the, pro on the website and tons of used products for those of you who like to save money. We're going to be phasing out the credit card usage um, the MasterCards and the Visas and American Express and all those guys are 
doing too much damage to the nation and the world's economy by virtue of just the, the, the rent-seeking nature of the, those vampires. They, they're sucking out too much resources, financial resources from the economy, from businesses and merchants and retailers like myself, at least $70 billion a year for nothing, for sending bits and bytes from one computer to the other one. They're extracting 60 to $70 billion. And they call it discount fees, settlement fees, batch fees, all these other fees, right? That's how I check when computers talk to each other and they send in bits and bytes. That's not a laborious task. That's not a task that requires a lot of weightlifting or, 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 or uh, effort on their part. You're basically just sending those bits and bytes from one place to the other. A bit can, 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 uh, one bit can contain or represent uh, a dollar or, or, or a billion dollars. It doesn't matter to the computer. I don't know how humans lie to each other and believe in this, 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 this scam. You know, in, in, what's, in terms of what's going on in the fiat world. Also, um, we're going to be implementing um, more and more, a uh, higher percentage of our, our, our transactions are going to be implemented in Bitcoin and, crypt, and, and other cryptocurrencies such as uh, Bcash, Litecoin, and Ethereum. So at some point, the shopping cart is going to be completely turned over to cryptocurrencies so we don't have to worry about uh, the disputes, the chargebacks, and the the, 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 the scam tactics perpetuated by MasterCard, who recently gave a customer his money back, even though he bought a product from my website that was labeled as used or as is, and only a retard would uh, assume that when you purchase something as is, that that means you get a warranty or a guarantee of any type. Anyway, stupid MasterCard retards over there they lumped it in the same category as a new product that actually is supposed to have some sort of guarantee or warranty associated with it, as if you can go to a flea market or a swap meet or something, whatever you call it in your, in your area, where you purchase goods from people on a personal basis and you expect a guarantee or a warranty of some sort, even though you, more than likely you paid in cash. There is no such animal, okay, period. It just doesn't happen. Anyway... Uh, use your Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum to purchase goods and services on our shopping cart. We know that your, uh, your, your crypto investments are worth a lot more money than your fiat investments. You know that and I know that by way, by way of the, what's happening in the uh, fiat world, spe specifically what's happening right now with um, the, 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 the tech sector liter literally imploding because the, the, um, the emperor has no clothing in, in, in terms of what's happening with Facebook. <laughs> and Google and a lot of these uh, companies who monetize personal data and they sell personal data and that's their whole business model. And we're finding out that a lot of that information was bogus. The advertising was bogus. The revenues derived from the bogus advertising is bogus. And Mark Zuckerberg and those guys are paying the price. And now the um, regulators are calling for Mark Zuckerberg's resignation from Facebook because of all of the scandals, just like Wells Fargo, all of the scandals at some point, you got to get rid of these people <clears throat> and just let the system implode, one or the other or both. I don't care. Anyway, on our website, we have articles, we have blogs and podcasts, such as the one we're going to submit today. Um, look for articles uh, in the categories of such, as, such categories we cover, like Health and fitness, economics and finance, cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, uh, cybersecurity, um, uh, what else? Anti terrorism, counter surveillance, surveillance techniques, all sorts of things. Just go there and have a look around. Then we have a miscellaneous category, which is huge by itself. Um, other than that, today's topic. Let's see what today's topic is all about. We're, our, we're chiming in on uh, crime data. Now, the, I'm going to preface this article, then I'll get to it. The reason why I'm focusing on this is because a lot of police departments throughout the nation are supposed to report crime data in their local communities. But when their systems are not compatible, when the people who run their local police stations and departments don't have the incentive to be responsible for reporting murders and homicides and everything else, what happens is ultimately the information that the FBI gets, the Department of Justice, the Bureau of Statistics, even Center 
Centers for Disease Control, they don't get accurate information. So when you when you when the information is corrupted or or or, or not not uh, accurately <laughs> uh, uh, submitted on a local level to the higher levels, what happens is now the nationwide statistics on crime and such doesn't give an accurate uh, indication of what is actually happening. So. We can't allocate, you can't allocate financial resources to areas like police stations or neighborhoods or whatever, uh, law enforcement agencies accurately with inaccurate information. It's not possible. So, you, you know, you step, you get off on the wrong foot, you end up on the wrong foot. Um, so let's take a look at the article in terms of what specifically is going on here. The FBI's crime data. What happens when states don't fully report? Again, the FBI's crime data. What happens when states don't fully report? Bureau's decades-old method to account for missing data could use an upgrade, some experts say. In any given year, more than 18,000 U.S. police agencies are asked to submit crime data to the FBI, but some don't provide complete information, or in some cases, any information at all. When that happens, the Federal Bureau of Investigation uses crude estimates to account for the missing data. Those figures are then used to generate crime the uni- crime in the United States, an annually an annual tally of violent and property crimes, that is a quality of life measure, as well as a gauge of criminal justice policies and spending. In most cases, the estimates, though rough, don't stray substantially from the submitted numbers. In the latest report, the FBI didn't adjust the counts of violent crime. For 11 states at all, but it inflated Indiana's numbers by 9.9 percent, West Virginia's by 13 percent, Mississippi's by 68 percent, raising that state's count to an estimated 8,526, up from a reported 5,084. Homicides, generally considered the most reliable of the FBI's crime statistics, showed similar discrepancies. The number for 28 states were not adjusted, but Mississippi's count the worst of the bunch was increased by 56% to an estimated 245 murders from a reported 157. What we need are error bars on this, but we don't have that, said Jeff Asher, a crime analyst based in New Orleans who argues the agency should publish margins of error with its numbers. And I agree. If you, whenever you give out an estimate on something and you know full well that it's an estimate, you have to let people know these numbers could be off by 3%, 4%, whatever amount, right? So that makes sense. Moving right along, it's impossible to know how far off the FBI's adjustments are, and experts offered mixed opinions about the, about the significance of the potential discrepancies. Robert Weisberg, co-director of Stanford University's Criminal Justice Center, and James Allen Fox, a criminologist at Northeastern University, said the numbers are close enough to evaluate trends over multiple years. Uh, contrary to Robert, <laughs> what Robert is saying, in addition to James, uh, at Northeastern University and Stanford University Criminal Justice Center, respectively, I disagree. I think in an era where you have mass, massive data computing and crunching capability, in addition to you, we have artificial intelligence and all these things now, we can, we, can, we can take huge amounts of data and crunch it and get more accurate portrayals of whatever is happening. And, and we're finding out that this applies across all industries, all disciplines, all academic institutions can use the AI-related technologies, for instance, and, and the data crunching capabilities that we have and that, 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 that are unprecedented. We have data centers that, that are almost the size of some cities now that, that, that we, where we can crunch numbers and add into infinitum. Moving right along, the problem is looking over, the problem is looking one year to the next, Dr. Fox said. Don't get hung up on the year-to-year changes. Uh, okay. The FBI's most recent report showed murders and violent crimes declined less than 1% from two, 2016 to 2017. That's just noise, said Richard Burke, a criminologist, criminologist at the University of Pennsylvania, suggesting the change, worth or without estimates, was insignificant. Other experts believe, at minimum, the FBI should use a more sophisticated system for generating estimates. I, I agree. Uh, it's high time to bring these agencies 
um, into the 21st century. There is no way around that. Okay, we don't need to be playing with pencils and paper right now. We, we need to make sure that we're getting the most accurate information possible. Okay, flipping coins and guessing and all that stuff. That's, that's, that's what you did in the 60s or something, but not, not anymore. Moving right along. Two decades ago, the Bureau of Justice Statistics, a unit of the Justice Department, published a 78-page paper critiquing the FBI's procedure and recommending ways to improve it. So far, nothing has come out of it, said Michael D. Maltz, the criminologist who wrote the paper and is now a researcher at Ohio State University's Criminal Justice Research Center. And, and see, we have to also consider not every police department and local law enforcement agency has the incentive to be held accountable. If I can just say, you know, we have an outdated, old-fashioned system that's not churning out good numbers because it's old and outdated and we refuse to update it. Now they have a built-in excuse, right, for why they didn't report accurate numbers. So people could be dying and getting killed by police officers or whatever. And because the, because the systems supposedly are, quote-unquote, ops, uh, uh, obsolete or old or antiquated, now they have a built-in excuse. So we need to get beyond the excuses and fire the people who are using those excuses. Right? Right. The FBI did not respond to requests for information, but Dr. Maltz, who with a grant from the American Statistical Association, has developed an alternative way to estimate the missing data, described the Bureau's procedures. He described the Bureau's procedure. When a jurisdiction provides data for three or more months, the FBI estimates the total by multiplying the reported number of crimes by 12 uh, slash N, where N is the number of months for which the reports exist. Using that formula, an agency that reports four months of crimes would be estimated to have 12 over four, or three times the number of crimes it reported. Because crimes are not evenly distributed throughout the year, that method could lead to over or underestimates, uh, depends, depending on whether the reported data cover months that are historically lower in crime, like winter, or those that are historically higher in crime, like summer. When a jurisdiction provides no data, the FBI estimates the number of crimes based on rates for similarly sized areas in the same state that provided all 12 months of data. Using, using that measure, if a jurisdiction with a population of 150,000 reports two months or less of crime data while jurisdictions in the state with a similar population report six, 620.2 crimes per 100,000 people, the, the agency that didn't fully report will be estimated to have had 930.3 crimes or 62.2 times 150,000 divided by 100,000. Um, this is the most stupid way of calculating because as mentioned seasonality has something to do with when crimes occur or not um incomes in an area has a lot to do with when crimes are the, the local industry in the area may not be identical to the other one all sorts of things can come into play when you're just making estimates based on based upon population sizes sizes for instance and even projections if I get two murders in a two-month period and I need to annualize that, I may indeed over-inflate the reported number of murders because we may not have any more murders left uh, going into the summer season or the remainder of the year. Who knows? Everything could change dramatically. So anyway, that's the most stupid thing that we're paying for. And this guy got a, a grant uh, to do this stupid study which is not helping anybody. But that's, when, that's what happens when you get, give money away. People think of clever ways to, uh, to waste the money. Moving right along, a better approach, according to Alicia Karakuri, a statistician, a statistician at Iowa State University, would take advantage of all of the available data, not only across agencies but across time. The FBI's less rigorous method was developed in the 1960s out of necessity when a single year of crime data was stored on seven or eight large reels of computer tape. Longitudinal, longitudinal imputation of missing data was truly impossible, Dr. Moss said. To fill in the gaps, the FBI used that data. I'm sorry, to fill, to fill in the gaps, the FBI used data that was most readily available to them, data on the same tape, either from the agency itself, inflating the available count to a 12-month estimate, or using similar agencies' data. Now, all of the data collected since 1960 will fit on a single thumb drive. And that said, 
is something you can uh, longitudinally count on. Uh, so that makes sense. If we're compressing data to the point of getting all of the equivalent of the, uh, of the data that they previously stored on seven or eight large reels of computer tape in the 1960s, um, and that was like a one year of data, and it took seven or eight large computer tapes, that you can't compare that to putting um, all of the crime data since 1960, for instance, on a single thumb drive. Okay, this means that you've got tons and tons of information that you can um, analyze and scrutinize. And you can come out with, report, with reports that are much more accurate, based upon much more information. So, again, uh, we need to either purge the existing law enforcement agencies or something of the people who don't understand technology and are afraid to implement it and are afraid to be held accountable, whatever the motive is, those people need to be uh, getting out of out of there, and uh, we we need to replace these people with some engineers and some people from the uh, maybe computer technology sector that know how to uh, um, upgrade these systems <laughs> so that when the police do go out and report crimes and and such, that that information is collected accurately. Uh, I, I, and for the and, and, and for, from the from the beginning, as compared to um, having some idiot uh, input whatever data they want or not or not to input data at all or whatever the hell they're doing, but this is a problem. That is the problem that I, that that that's going on, you guys. Bogus information, inaccurate information, grants and loans and. And, and resources are allocated from a federal level based upon crap, crappy information. As they say, garbage in, garbage out. So the taxpayers end up footing the bill and paying for a lot of, for, for, for paying for the misallocation of resources because it, some idiots uh, decided to either manipulate the data or just get too lazy to report it accurately or whatever. Who knows what's going on? But those days, uh, we need to make sure that those days are over and we start stepping into the 21st century so um, everyone can benefit from having accurate information. If you buy a house in a new neighborhood or start a business in a certain region of town or something, you want accurate information, not inaccurate information. Anyway, as we like to say at the conclusion of every, every single podcast, you guys keep your eyes and ears open and stay safe out there. Have a good day. Bye.